Let's welcome the crazy guys, <laughs> Homer and Jethro. Come on. Listen, folks, and you shall learn The music business ain't worth a darn If you don't get to be a star You may have to eat your old guitar And it tastes awful Chewing on strings Eating splinters I got ten dollars from a pop And I went down to old Abe's hawk shop Got a cheap guitar and a pick for my thumb Look out, Nashville, here I come Move over there, boys I may be the next Roy Acuff Or a Stonewall Jackson I went up to the studio Where they hold auditions for the show All they said when I got through Don't call us, boys, we'll call you And I'm still a-waiting Been two years now they don't hurry, I'll forget my act. I finally got a chance one day to make a record for RCA. I bought me a great big Cadillac, but the finance company took it back. I missed a lot of payments. I broke my back trying to put up a big front. Oh, I'm getting hungry. Can't eat that prestige. The Grand Ole Opry beckoned me Another star I thought I'd be I sung my song right from the heart Applaud, I thought they'd never start I laid a great big egg I went over like a lump of mud Looks like I've had it Country music's here to stay In spite of anything I say I'll go back home and be a bum or I'll sing like Simon Crumb. I just a kidding, Simon. Don't sue us. That's all, boys. Let's fade out. Fade out. I can still hear you. I like to say. First of all, that it's very nice to be back at the CMA, that's MCA spelled backwards. <laughs> and it's nice to see that they have improved the place somewhat. Tonight I refer to the fact that they have placed new drunks around the speaker's table. <laughs> I have seen a more motley-looking group, but I've got to think a long time to remember where. <laughs> see? But, you know, just look at that. Now, there is a collection. Did you ever see anything uh, quite like this? Uh, this, to me, it looks like the Last Supper. <laughs> and I think probably this may be the original cast. <laughs> I'm only kidding because today we concluded a very wonderful financial deal with the CMA boys. We really hooked them. We're going to get that 10 bucks back one way or another. We uh, did sign this thing today, and boy, we really had to pull some strings to do it. Half Peebles was pitching for us. And boy, that's the worst thing going to happen. Half came to me one time and he says, Jethro, I want to be your press agent. And we hired him. In two years' time, he got us one plug. He got a half paragraph in the Communist Daily Worker. <laughs> and he spelled the names wrong. 
I'm only kidding, though. We did sign this new deal. We signed a five-year contract with the CMA. It states that we won't appear here for another five years. <laughs> We're going to get down to the music. First of all, we have a very wonderful group back here. Uh, we have some wonderful musicians. I think tonight this may be one of their off nights. I'm not sure. <laughs> Bill Purcell is on piano. We had uh, planned to have Floyd Kramer, but he fell off of his bank book and broke his leg. <laughs> Bob Moore is here. He has the hit record on Mexico, and it serves him right. It'd be funny if he has you to appear can, uh... on the Dick Clark show, won't it? LAUGHTER <laughs> How can you plan a mind with a bass? I mean, <laughs> an instrumental, you know? I don't know. I think he can do it, though. Uh, I was going to say, you know, Mexico, we played Juarez, you know. And, yeah, that's uh, a swinging place. Picked up a lot of things down there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's where uh, we uh, picked up El Paso. Yeah, right? that's right. Uh, I was hoping you meant that. Uh, you may have gathered by now that we are the... Juvenile delinquents who grew up to be dirty old men. Uh, we don't apologize for it. We just enjoy it, you know. Uh, this is the most ridiculous thing I've seen. It's a mirror. It's what? It's a mirror. A mirror. What magazine are you from? <laughs> Show, business. Show business Illustrated. Oh, gee. Thanks a lot. You got your manager back there. <laughs> That's the editor. Uh, go ahead and take some pictures because we need them. <laughs> go, go over and take one of Eddie Arnold. He uh, needs it. <laughs> you know, he's the kind of a guy that'll invite you over to his house for a beer party and then lock all the bathroom doors. <laughs> Getting back to the beer, uh, I, I used, wish we could. I used to drink beer till uh, till I got this bad throat, you know. And uh, we were playing up in Canada, and uh, I went to a doctor, and uh, an old army doctor. He looked down my throat and he says, uh, <laughs> <laughs> "See, I switched that around a little." Uh, <laughs> Anyway, he uh, looked down my throat and he says, Gee, he says, have you ever had this before? I said, yeah. He said, well, you got it again. <laughs> then he, uh, he wanted to paint my throat, but we couldn't agree on a color. <laughs> and he finally did paint my throat and he darn near killed me. He used a roller. <laughs> then he told me, he says, uh, what you need is a lot of liquids. He says, go back to the hotel, drink a case of beer, and stay in bed all day. <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> Deep within my heart, there's a melody of rose of old San Antonio and it caused a stir when they deported her for she forgot the Alamo oh her hair reminds me of the deep blue sea not wild not wavy it just makes me sick it was plain to see that her anatomy was beaten with an ugly stick She was picking cotton in old Mexico And plucking chickens to make some dough Headed for the border, riding on a horse Then that cotton-picking chicken plucker came across Out behind the hog shop there we met and kissed I tried to get her alone Then I took her out In the moonlight and mist 
my rose, my rose, sad and tall. Above, cause she was just too tough to burn. <laughs> you keep playing like that, and you wind up on the Grand Ole Opry. <laughs> I was dancing with my darling to the Tennessee Waltz at the annual fireman's ball. All the people, they were staring because my girl was wearing a newspaper dress. That was all. Oh, she had comic strips from her knees to her hips Where her one ads were, I can't recall Then her dress, it caught on fire And it burned her entire front page sports section And all Oh, put your big mouth a little closer to the phone. Don't you try to tell me that you're all alone. You only go out with your friends, you told me so. But you don't have no enemies, <laughs> you'll have to go. How's he doing? As a Tomcat said when he kissed a skunk, though it's been grand, I've enjoyed about all of this. That I can stand You said you'd stick With me through thick And then I know The longer you stick The thinner I get You've gotta go When your mother Came to visit us She would knock Then knock again you and me would always have a fuss Cause I wouldn't let her in Oh, put your fat mouth a little closer to the phone Don't you try to tell me that you're all alone That man with you must be a naval, must be a navy man I know. So you can tell him the coast is clear now. He'll have to go. Do you one more little spasm here? We gotta run back to the hotel and check our traps. I don't think it'll do us any good. Our bait is shot. 
I'm using Jim Edward Brown on my basses. <laughs> Way back in 1942, or maybe 43, we sailed with Captain Tuna, the chicken of the sea. We didn't sink the Bismarck, no matter what they say. For when we seen the German ships, we sailed the other way. Oh, we didn't sink the Bismarck, and we didn't fight at all. We spent our time in Norfolk, and we really had a ball. Chasing after women while our ship was overhauled. A living it up on grapefruit juice and sick bay alcohol. We saw torpedoes coming, and we saw a periscope. We were full of fighting spirit, and our hope, and our souls were full of hope. I got my nose fixed, now my mouth don't work. The captain yelled, now hear this, he really flipped his lid. We haven't yet begun to fight, what's more, we never did. Cook was a setting on the deck. We was appealing taters. We must appeal the pack. The captain yelled, "Hey Tony, is that a U boat I see?" Tony says, "It ain't my boat. She's an old belong to me." A frogman on the demolition team I sunk a battleship, a cruiser and a submarine I blew up ammunition dumps I did my best to please I did it all before the Navy sent me overseas in Peoria last week. Uh, oh, you mean the note? Give me the note. Ah, right, here it is. It's a D. You got that now? Okay. It's a little flat, but I'll take it. 
And now the war is over and our story can be told About our captains fighting and the young ones and the old We stayed in San Francisco away from the battle scenes We spent our time on Treasure Island fighting the Marines Oh, we didn't sink the Bismarck and we didn't fight at all We spent our time in Norfolk and we really had a ball Chasing after women while our ship was overhauled a living it up on grapefruit juice and sick bay alcohol. Thank you very much. You're, you're a wonderful audience. I haven't heard applause like that since I told my wife I was leaving home. <laughs> I brought my wife with me to the convention this year. It's like taking your lunch to a banquet. <laughs> We'd like to do a song here that uh, we, well, we like to try to do a lot of different kinds of music. We don't do them, but we would like to. But one of the most popular forms of uh, music anymore is the uh, bluegrass style. We like uh, bluegrass music, and uh, we, uh, we play sort of a bluegrass. Well... It's, well, we call it sort of crabgrass. Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> We're going to get to this song. Now, there's a young fellow that uh, is trying so hard to get along, and he has tried and by golly uh, I think us doing one of his tunes will probably get him over the hump into the poorhouse <laughs> we'd like to do a song now written by the struggling young songwriter Mr. Harlan Howard we fall When we see girls walking by We still chase women But can't remember why We're just like a dog that we must admit A dog will chase a car until he has a fit But what's he gonna do if he catches it? Scratch and flee while we fall to pieces We ain't through yet I think we ought to take it when we can get it Here we go We fall to pieces Each time we hear children cry we fall to pieces And here's the reason why A little boy was crying He felt so blue Because he couldn't do What all the big boys do So we sat down and we started crying too That's why we fall to pieces Thank you. Well, it ain't Patsy Klein, but it'll do. <laughs> hey, we, uh, we got a deal. You know, everybody's always offering you, you know, deals. They want you to make money and all of that, but who needs it? We do. But uh, today, we got a letter from the State Department, and they want to send us abroad. <laughs> and... Uh, by golly, I think it's all right. I, I wrote back and I said, well, send one for Homer and you got a deal. Archie Camel. 
Oh, my flower of the wildwood was skinny and tall. But for her Adam's apple, she'd have no shape at all. I can still see her there, sitting under the trees, tying knots in her stockings so it looked like she had knees. <laughs> show that come to our town and she thought as a stripper her fortune was found but she bumped into trouble and now she is gone instead of yelling take it off they hollered leave it on Like a horse, but she never grew big. About as useless as spraying perfume on a pig. I'm a natural blonde, my flower would swear. But black was the color of the roots of her hair. On the 13th of July, 1962, we will be appearing in person in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. <laughs> if you are in the area, we would like you to drop in. We're on percentage. I don't say that these tours are anything out of the ordinary. I do know this. We were up there in January with Ray Price. He had to take out a liquor license for his bus. <laughs> we saw a sign that says, Drink Canada Dry. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. After 10 days, we had him working nights. This guy, Hap, I want to tell you that he has done a lot for country music by staying so far away from it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Hap. I want to tell you one thing, that if you ever book another tour and you think about us, how about kicking the price up a little, huh? <laughs> Old buddy. You laugh if you want to. This is the one promoter. He can take a star and make an unknown out of him overnight. <laughs> The rest of them are sitting there wondering if we're going to go down the line later on. You know, we, we'll get to Steve's shows later. He's, boy, old Steve, I wish you'd lose some weight because, boy, this year he was nominated for the best small group. I don't know. I'm, I'm just kidding, Steve. Boy, that's... Be prosperous. And Ken Nelson looks happy, too. I don't know why. Well, I know why, too. He's got Tex Ritter. And, boy, I'll say this. An act like us, we got to go out and we got to fight for material. We ride it. We steal it. We buy it. Anything to get something to do. But a guy like Ritter, he records the obituary column and gets a hit. Oh, well, Tex is still, uh, he doesn't get any more bookings now that he has the hit. They don't book him anymore, but now he is laying off at a higher price. 
We're going to do this thing here. It's a uh, thing called Sad Movies Make Me Cry. And this day and time, all of the movies are adult things. And I saw this sign in front of a theater in Chicago. It says... Heartline. In case the folks listening didn't hear that, that was a telephone, I guess. I hope so. Otherwise, the place is raided. <laughs> no, we, we saw this sign. It says, no parents under 16 admitted without their children. <laughs> and uh, don't laugh. Listen, this movie thing is pretty good. We were almost in the movies a couple of years back. We had uh, read all of these scripts and books trying to find this movie that would suit our particular talents, and we found one finally. It was called Peyton Place. <laughs> and we were screen tested for this thing, and we actually got the part. But after we finished the rehearsal, we were too weak to make the movie. <laughs> I'm glad you read the book. But you know, the last time we did TV, it was on the 7-inch screen, but, uh... <laughs> Thanks a lot. Anyway... I know a lot of people ask me since I've been here about our TV stuff. Uh, our TV plans. Yeah, our Boy, plans. we got them, ain't we? Yeah. We plan to watch it all winter. Yeah. <laughs> We're not doing too bad, though. Ed Sullivan and Jack Parr are fighting over us right now. The loser gets us. <laughs> I was just thinking, Homer, you know, uh, we're kind of getting up in years now. I'm touching 29. You're beating the stuff in All right. <laughs> but I was just thinking, you know, we could take 10 years off of this act if you would get a toupee. Well, I can't see any sense in buying a top for a convertible after the motor's shot, you know. <laughs> I watch Jack Parr and all of the TV shows Laying on my back and a peeping out between my toes And then a western movie filled the screen It was the oldest and the worst one I had ever seen The cowboy star Was a guy named Cactus Jack And he quit punching cows Cause the cows kept punching back Although the film was blurred I could have sworn Instead of riding on a horse, he was riding on a dinosaur. Bad movies always fracture me. One arm, Pete, come a riding across the Rio Grande with a great big 45 in either hand. The commercial came on, and poor old Pete got shot between the weather report. And the underarm deodorant spot <laughs> giggled and I tittered and I laughed until I cried 
Then mama come in and sat down by my side She said, what's ailing you, you little creep I told her bad movies always make me Thank you very much, and we, of course, would like to acknowledge the wonderful fellows in the band, the tenor sax by our good friend, Mr. Boots Randolph, Bill Purcell on piano, Bob Moore on bass, and Buddy Harmon on drums, and you just can't hardly beat a deal like that. It's wonderful to have guys like this. I mean, you look at these guys, they got hit records of their own. And here we are. <laughs> I mean, when you appear with celebrities behind you and in front of you and looking at you, this is kind of like being marooned on a desert island with Bridget Bardot and her husband. <laughs> I mean, you enjoy it, but you ain't really necessary. See? <laughs> I like this, though. You know, tonight, I mean, just the, the band back here alone, it reads like who's who. Ordinarily, our backup band would read like, what's that, you know? Mm, oh. It's out in the hall. It's, it's out right. there, buddy. Uh, I made a mistake. I got in the wrong one while I go out there. It's marked. I thought it said laddies. Oh. <laughs> we, uh, we'd like to do a song here that... Every once in a while, a real ballad comes along that we think is worthy of our talents. <laughs> and this could be called a country song, or it could be called anything. We've got several names for it, none of which we can use here. But this is a very sentimental thing called A Letter to Ellie Mae. Boots, you do the introduction, and we'll just kind of hang on, Okay. young fella away for what they call a well-needed rest. So he said goodbye to his Ellie Mae as the guys in white, they took him away cause everyone agreed that it was best. I know something you don't know, Homer. Okay. Ellie Mae, oh Ellie Mae, why'd you let him take me away? Sort of sound like the Wilburn Brothers, don't it? On an off night Dear Ellie Mae Sweetheart, baby doll, sweet thing I think I'll write you a letter Everything is just great here These guys are so funny Every time they tell a joke I just jump up and run As far as my ankle chains will allow me I sure do miss you Every time I look at your picture, I just jump up and run all around the room, a bouncing off of them walls and a yelling. Hey, let's sing now. Ellie Mae, oh Ellie Mae, why'd you let them take me away? Don't bother to look in They know he's right Now he may again And do it in his own nutty way Ellie Mae, oh Ellie Mae Won't you be my queen for a day? I sure do hope you can read this, Ellie Mae I'm riding it with the blunt end of a spoon They won't let us have no sharp instruments here by the way, I'm sorry you can't come to see me this weekend. 
I set the mess hall on fire and they took away my visiting privileges. Well, I guess I better close now. They got my cage cleaned out and it's lockup time here at the college. Ellie Mae, oh Ellie Mae, won't you be my queen for a day?